some days I feel like <laughs> we haven't gone anywhere and that we're still in the same place because there's so much hatred and bigotry in the world and it's so visible and vocal all the time. Um, and it's easy to get really worn down by that. What we have to do is remember that for all the voices screaming, God hates fags, we have to scream, I love you, even louder. And that you are loved and that you belong in the world, even louder than those voices of hate. The things that seem to divide us are fundamentally based in the fact that we've never questioned what we've been taught. So whether that's our political beliefs or our religious beliefs, um, when you just accept it and buy into it, it's because it's easier. It's easier to be told, this is the way the world should be, these are the rules, and stick to them. Um, if you never question that, then everybody else is just wrong. You don't have to question, you don't have to educate yourself on any issues. You already know the answer, and anybody that doesn't fit that mold is in the wrong and you can just hate them for being wrong. It's easier to never have to learn something again. Learning to love myself really took a lot of detangling of my faith. The less attached I became to the faith practices of Christianity, um, the less weighed down I felt. Um, and the less connected I felt to the condemnation and the judgment. The predominant belief that if God wanted me to change and I wanted to change being gay and that didn't happen, made me start to believe that God didn't exist um, or not in the way that I had been taught. What it means though is that I don't rely on a faith to give me a moral compass. Me wanting to help people and to make an impact on the amount of time I have on earth doesn't come from a hope of an eternal reward. It comes from me being grateful for the people who made a difference in my life. Conversion therapy is still being practiced today. Uh, there are 20 states that have protected um, their children, minors in the U.S., from being subjected to conversion therapy by licensed mental or medical health professionals that are licensed by the state. Um, but 30 states, including Georgia, uh, have not. Even though every major medical and mental health association in the world has stated categorically that conversion therapy doesn't work and causes pain and trauma. There are no states that protect children from experiencing conversion therapy through non-licensed professionals, such as faith leaders. Um, so even in states where a therapist can't practice it, a pastor or a Christian counselor who's not licensed through the state can subject children to torture and to teach them to hate themselves and to make them feel isolated and hopeless. There's a scripture that says, and they'll know you're Christians by your love. No one on earth knows somebody is a Christian by their love. Not to say that there's no loving Christians, but that is not a defining trait of Christianity and practice. Like many other faiths, their faith has been used to harm people systemically throughout history and still today. Um, I know lots of Christians that I have a lot of respect for, so I don't want to attack an entire faith. What I do want to attack is anyone who uses their faith as a weapon to beat people down and to do harm. If their denomination supports conversion therapy or banning gay marriage or any, any other practice like that, then they are harming people. If you are going to a church and your church denomination's official stance is that gay people can't get married, then your gay son will never feel loved by you if you're still part of that denomination. If you're if your non-binary child sees that you go to a church that's official stance is that trans and non-binary people are pedophiles and can't teach Sunday school because they might molest your child, then it doesn't matter if you tell your child you love them, you're contributing to harming your child by being associated with that hate. If the faith that you attach that name of Christian to has systemically done harm to queer people throughout history, are you in fact contributing 
to that harm by attaching yourself to that faith practice. What gives me the most fulfillment in life and what has brought me the most joy has been realizing that all the things that the conversion therapist told me I would never have, that I could never be happy, I could never find love, that I would die of a disease, um, aren't true. And that my life is full of love and joy and family. I've been married to my husband for eight and a half years now. And with so much of my life being me just trying to survive, he has helped me thrive. And he has given me a platform to leap off of but also a secure place to come back to. June 26, uh, 2015, um, my husband and I had been married already for a year and a half, um, not legally. We had had our ceremony with uh, family and friends and my, my twin brother officiating our ceremony, but because it wasn't legally recognized in Georgia, um, we just had a ceremony. We knew that this case was going up to the Supreme Court, and I think that Neither of us thought that gay marriage was going to become legal. The front desk girl at the slum came up and was like, congratulations, mid me doing somebody's hair. It didn't even cross my mind what she was talking about. My husband had called twice and um, we both left work early and we went to the courthouse and we were sitting in line to get our marriage license and the people in front of us were a gay couple that had been together for 23 years. Um, and it was such a beautiful perspective on the day to see somebody who'd been waiting for 23 years just to get what everybody else takes for granted it was so beautiful and really gave me some gravity and some perspective that day. Uh, so we got married officially legally the day that the Supreme Court ruled um, on gay marriage and I'm forever grateful for every single one of the justices that voted for gay marriage. But I'm also grateful for the individuals that voted politicians in that appointed those justices. And I am very aware that the struggle for queer rights has been, that didn't just happen, that happened because individuals showed up and made a change and made a difference. And so more than ever, I'm aware of how fragile our rights are um, in the US and around the world and how, how important it is to vote every time and to be educated on where your politicians stand. And then also, as queer people, to educate our loved ones on why it's important that they vote um, and the ways that their vote and their voice can actually affect you. So uh, that day that the Supreme Court ruled was such a beautiful, joyful day, but one with such depth to it and such importance to it because there's so much that went to that moment. It was a very joyful time um, and a time full of hope. Uh, seeing later that night the White House lit up in rainbow colors and the statements from the Obamas is just something that like growing up in a world where being gay was the joke, being gay was gross and disgusting and an insult to seeing the President of the United States supporting this decision and the White House lit up in pride colors is just fantastic. Until we all fight for each other, we're all fighting alone. Sometimes the world is still really dark and heavy and seeing people that are actively make, taking action to make change is what gives me hope in the world. Hatred is the waves crashing against the rocks, and love is the rock. And love is so much stronger and will be there after the wave dissipates.